just said fail the same tweet. Welcome everyone back to the Learning Clinic on CKLU 96.7 FM. I'm your host, Bob Kerwin, and as I promised, in the studio with me today is Ian Heft. Ian is running for position of city council um, in Ward 1. Yeah. Ian, Hi. welcome to La Rancho. Thanks for having me. You're home away from home. Yeah, <laughs> not as much anymore as in past years. I've been writing my thesis, so I think I'm here about once a week. I have a class I TA for, but I like the chance to be off campus a little more too. I've, I've definitely worked here, lived here, studied here, so. Yeah, you've you've got a, you've got an undergraduate degree. <laughs> That's right. Yep. In English lit. In English lit. Yep. And you're currently working on your masters. That's right. I I uh, was in con ed and then um, did four out of five years of that, and then when it came time to decide whether or not to do the last year, I chose to stick around and do my masters. I felt that was sort of where I was being pulled in. I was working here with accessibility, helping them run the testing center for students with disabilities for a couple of years. So I've worked all over counseling, student services, accessibility services. Wow. Okay. So you've had uh, yeah, you've had quite a background. I've got my Laurentian experience, you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So we're we're looking at you now taking the step to become city council. Yep. And I'm just going to adjust the, close the door so we don't hear the background noise uh, from the radio in the other room, but sure. can you give us a little bit of an idea of, of your background and I guess why when a person's wondering, okay, do I mark off Ian Heft on the ballot or not? Who is Ian Heft? What, 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 what is it about the person? Right. Well, that makes you a, a suitable candidate. It's definitely a great question, something to think about. Um, I, uh, well, my, my biggest thing that got me involved was the idea of some of the services uh, that were being offered, um, as well as the idea of this merger of the Ontario Works and ODSP. So I wanted to, because my work is in serving people with disabilities and people with mental health issues, I wanted a platform to raise the profile of some of these groups in the community. So I, I think I'm, I'm a good... Uh, candidate like or a good uh, choice because you know I'm very much uh, in tune with the the current issues the situation for individuals um, I've got a diverse array of experience serving individuals in the community with uh, mental health issues and disabilities so for the most part um, it's about activism it's about um, you know getting the message out there so as a communicator as someone who cares deeply about uh, individuals in the community I think it, it'd be a chance to try to change some things and try to bring some new things to the forefront. So you're giving the people at council, the, the other 12 people sitting around the table, you're giving people a perspective on running the city that is... Kind of from the other half, you know. <laughs> I, I've driven transit before. I. I um, I'm one of those people that lives, you know, not paycheck to paycheck, but paycheck to a couple days before paycheck, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, I've been a student. I, recently, I am a student. I, I've lived on OSAP. I've lived on, uh, like, um, you know, in terms of, I've, I've been on EI before. I know, I know what it's like to have to sort of, you know, dig to, to make things fit. I know a lot of people are in that situation as well. So I think I could bring the perspective of someone who's not, uh, you know, at, at, at a stage in their life where they're a little more comfortable, but someone who's still building up to that, you know? <clears throat> wow, yeah. So, and, and I guess, is, is this where a lot of people talk about the youth perspective? Youth engagement? I, I think so. I think there's a lot of uh, ways I can sort of try to get out there to that community as well. I mean, it's difficult. There's a lot of apathy, right? But I, I think the biggest thing would be trying to just get the message out there. And social media is a big thing, and I continue to do that throughout, um, you know, being on council. Transit, I just released a policy statement on transit. I think there's a lot of priorities with that. Um, I'd like to just oversee this, this idea of this transition because if the provincial government is putting responsibility down to the municipalities, that's going to, um, you know, there's going to be a lot going on at this level as well in, in the interim. So just to oversee that um, and just to kind of promote things that make a little bit more sense and services that are a little more streamlined. Good. You're obviously one of the younger 
candidates who have put their name forward. It's yeah, Mike Blesky is as well as yeah, Mike is, at Cambrian. Uh, yeah. Mike's been in here. Um, yeah, I think Mike was in here doing the first show right. that we did in January. So, so we're starting to get some interest from individuals who are at a, at a certain at the beginning of their career path. Yep. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you're getting people that are at my stage mm -hmm. of the career path. Actually, I, I think you and I have had this discussion. I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Yeah, so, exactly. So, I mean... You don't have to know yeah. anymore. It changes so yeah. often. That yeah, I <laughs> and I think that's one of the interesting things that we're... It, it, that may be an issue that nobody's really putting on their platform. But this idea that what's here today is gone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If very and what you plan very today, a year from right. now, your change, your plans may have to change. Well, especially you know, and in a few years when council switches again, so, and same thing in parliament when you've got things going through, and as soon as that gets cut, dies on the floor. You know, I agree. Yeah, and, and I think one of the one of the the, the big changes in governance I, I, that I can see happening, and, and, and that people have to get used to, is this whole idea that. You may take a position on a certain issue today, but if you're going to say that you're never going to go off that issue right. forever, yeah. I don't know if, if there is a better group than youth, than younger people, I guess. I, younger used to be under 30, maybe it's under 40 now, I'm not sure. But, <laughs> um, and 30. You've grown up in a society where change is the only thing that's constant. That's right. And, and um, you know, the idea that, like, I saw a presentation where they talk about, you know, no wonder there's such prevalence of ADD and ADHD because everyone's on the go all the time. They've got 20,000 screens around them, and then they're expected to sit in a classroom and lock down to something. But, no, I, I think definitely there's a fleeting atmosphere. Every, everything is really changing and, and uh, moving around, and, and especially with youth these days. And there's a lot of people changing schools. There's family dynamics, you know. Um, People, youth go through a lot of changes, a lot of different traumas and dramas in their life. And sure. you have to react to them. Now, now here's, here's the interesting thing. Government works like a, a huge tanker. That's right. <laughs> it takes so much to change direction. It yeah. takes so much to get any kind of momentum. Yeah. And, and I think, it, and I don't really think it, it's a matter of how many birthdays you celebrate. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an outlook. It, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a mental... I guess personality. And something right. you're going to carry with you, right? Yeah. And something that's going to continue. Yeah. So how do we, how do we change this whole way of governance? Where generally, in order to, for anything to happen, it takes about two years of study, yeah. committees, and, yeah. and and you don't have time because I I have gone in and I, I don't have to tell you this because you're at that stage. I've talked to young people at schools and I've said, you know what, trying to figure out your career is like trying to hit a moving target. Yeah. You better be aiming where you think the career is going to go, because right. by the time you're ready to get in there, it's not going to be the same as what you thought. They're going to be looking for something different, or you're going to be overqualified, or yeah. you're going to be underqualified. It's not going to be what you thought That's it was. Right. When you, so, so it's anticipating the changes and anticipating the requirements becomes so huge. I mean, um, and the master's, the new new bachelor now, you know, education inflation. What you used to be worth, you know, five years ago, you're not now worth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's such a discrepancy in terms of, as you say, there's a lot of people who live not just from paycheck to paycheck. I've never heard of that before. Paycheck to <laughs> so two, three days before I paycheck. I but uh, yeah, but it's, it's, it's a good way of saying it. It's getting to that point, you know. Uh, just saw something come through on Facebook so that just reminded me that uh, the cost of stamps is going up to a dollar. That's right. And, and yet yeah. they're cutting residential mail deliveries right. up to so get less like, for more. <laughs> right. We. Um, we talked before uh, before you got in about an issue that's coming up in Valley East right now. That's it actually in Ward Seven, Six, and Five, where the um, the recreation center, Howard Armstrong Recreation Center, was built in 1983 yeah. at a time when the town of Valley East was on its own, and a lot of controversy about building it because you had to take your your tax base and whatever the government didn't give you, you had to add to your taxes. Sure to pay for it. And so what happened was, in order to sell that to the community, that they would increase their taxes, yeah. they promised that the rates would be family friendly and very affordable. Yeah. And they've been able to maintain that for 30 years, but what's happened is, 
now that we, we belong to the city of Greater Sudbury, all of the other fitness places, none of them have the amenities. None of them have what was built back in 1983 with mm -hmm. the indoor track, squash, pool, uh, the sauna. Like, it's got, similar to the Y. It's yeah. Got, it's very similar to Y. It's got everything, yeah. state of the art. All the other places have a fitness room or, or an indoor track or just a standalone pool. Sure. So when you buy a family membership, you're not getting very much at these other places, but you buy a family membership at the Howard Armstrong Center, you're getting everything. It's an all-exclusive package. You get free swimming lessons, public swimming. Like, so city council decided to increase the rates. They wanted to raise the revenue that they're getting from all their fitness centers by 2%. Yeah. I heard it on, it was on the way up here. Yeah. I was listening to that, yeah. So, so there's, there's a situation, for example, as councillors, we've got to face and say, okay, we've got to raise by 2%. So what we're going to do is raise by 2%, but there's one group that is so much below what everybody else is being charged That's right. that, that if we raise them to the levels of the others, we can actually reduce the others almost. Yeah. But it means that a small group now is paying for our burden. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And and I guess what because I was I was around in nineteen seventy four prior to the building of this, it was the people who put their taxes in to build the Howard Armstrong Center were like me, knowing that okay, I'm gonna pay for this now. When I retire, if I'm still living here, I'm gonna have access that's to there. this. That's there, they're building it for the future. Yeah. 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 And so now it's like, oh my god. Now that I'm there, you're saying everything that I paid before doesn't count anymore, and I'm going to have to pay for, why did we even bother? Yeah. So, and then you've got the people who live from paycheck to two days or three days before paycheck. Yeah. If you can go and buy a membership for $700, it's going to be for your entire family. Now you want to go someplace with your kids, you can go swimming, you can yeah. take the swimming lessons, you don't have to wonder how much more am I going to have to pay. So as a council, we have to take a look and say, what are we here for? Yeah. Are, are we here to say whoever's going to be living in Sudbury has to pay more for less services? Or are we going to say, let's try to bring more people into Sudbury so we have more people bringing revenue Or in. work better with the money we have. That, that's have. right. Uh, I agree. Uh, it's, it's, and like, there's other options as well. I know the gym I, I belong to downtown, it's about $10 a month, but then... Uh, there's a startup fee, and then every six months they charge you twenty dollars. It's like a rate guarantee fee, but still, I mean, when you work it out over the year, it's cheaper than than it would be. So, like you mentioned, bringing in more people at, or or encouraging more membership, you would get more revenue. I, I I heard you say that on the way up. So, yeah, I think the biggest thing is to look not at just the numbers, but at creative ways. You know, you can spread it out. You can charge less at one point, and then you know maybe have a little bit of a fee to offset that, but. Yeah. It makes it a little more palatable, a little, a little easier to swallow. I want to lead into your, your transit uh, paper, your policy that you, yeah. you, that you released, because one of the things about transit is basically we have to understand as a city that yes, about 5% of all of the users of our roads yeah. actually use transit. Right. And every single person that gets on a bus costs the city money. Yeah. There's no way that a bus, a right. transit system can make money. That's right. You can't be privatized. No. So it's like the arenas, it's like the parks, it's like the trails, it's like the recreation centers. Yeah. There are certain things that as a council, you put your taxes in together and, and it's a right. Mm -hmm. You have to provide them. You don't provide them as if you're a business saying we have to make a profit. You say, right. we have to eat the cost. That's right. So these people can get to work and get yeah. to, you know, people that can't afford a car, people who, which I, I was in that group until just August, my grandfather, uh, gave me his old car, which wasn't an old car at all. I mean, it was a 2005 Camry with less than 60,000 kilometers. So it was, it's like a brand new car. Yeah. But uh, no, I understand. You know, I was I was in that that group of the five percent too. But I think we could increase the percentage that rides transit if we had transit that that people could get to more easily. I, I know, I um, I used to be in the situation where, you know, if I had to go to two different things within the day, it was hard to. Time that out. And I remember you used to you would get some tutoring for me. And yep. you, you had to schedule yourself so that I could get there. Yeah. Yeah. And there were some times when your tutoring session would end, and, and it just wouldn't be consistent with the transit. Yeah. Schedule. Yeah. I'd have to just kind of go grab something to eat, wait for the bus. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so what is your what, what is your idea for transit? Because I I, th I think if if certain candidates are going to say they have certain things that they're they're really focusing on more than others, I I think in 
from what I, and I could be wrong, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think transit's really important. Yeah, transit um, and assistance services, city services in general, but for the transit, the biggest thing, I mean, things that we can do that just make it make a little more sense, I'm not saying we should have full service on Sundays, but at the same time, I mentioned a situation where I, I was um, on Southridge Mall going toward downtown, so toward Paris and region, and the bus comes up, goes to turn into uh, like Southridge and drives right by me to turn left. Like I'm on the other side of the street. He turns left into Southridge Mall, and the lady that I was with and I were like, uh, "What?" <laughs> right? The next bus comes by and he says, "Oh, well, the bus driver can't actually safely stop there because of the way you've got to come to the right and then get into the left lane. They can't physically do it, or or shouldn't or whatever." So uh, yeah, they. So if you have a bus stop that you can't actually stop at. Oh, that yeah, that doesn't make much right? sense. Right, move the bus stop down further so that he can get into the lane. Get, I'm, they might have changed that by now because I, I did ask the city. I was like, "That's not a bus stop. That's a bus go." Right, you go right by. It. But, um, but you there's know, there's a good example. <coughs> I don't want to interrupt you, but there's a good example. It's such a simple solution. Yeah. Why wasn't it thought about? Exactly, and you know we still have we still have stops on Sunday that no bus goes by, so you're going to be waiting for a long time. You know, Waterview and. I think there's some parts in Minnow you know, Lake, uh, some other ones, where they take about 29 bus routes and condense them into 12. But, okay, there's one thing to save money, but when you're trying to do it to the point where it defeats its own purpose, because each of these bus routes runs every hour, but the routes are too big to actually complete in an hour, and then if you can't get it done in an hour, and every bus waits for every other bus, they're all being made progressively later throughout the day. So that's a case where, it, you know, regardless of how much money you're trying to spend, it's not doing its purpose. So, and, what, and what's the difference between a Sunday and a Saturday nowadays? Oh, well, Saturday buses... In, no, but, but I mean, in oh, terms of lifestyle. That's right. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, Everyone Sundays, works now. everybody's on the move on exactly. Sunday. And, yeah. uh, like, if you go to some of the shopping centers on Sunday, it's just as busy as it is sure. on Saturday. And Saturday service, you know, they, they make it every half an hour um, instead of every... Or, sorry, every... Half hour instead of every fifteen minutes in some cases, usually every hour instead of every half hour. But it's not excuse me, it's not that much of a reduction. So so why are we even reducing it on uh, Saturday and Sunday when that most people are out about need to use yeah. it? Yeah, and actually, it. it's people who like you say five percent take the transit. These are people who might have their day off. They might so the most of the population that uses transit will probably be out either getting to work or or you know leisure time. And and I know for example. Um, Santa Claus parades. I, I, I think my son and uh, daughter-in-law, the last couple of years, they've actually taken the public transit sure. downtown rather than taking a car because yeah. they can take the transit from the valley downtown and not have to worry about parking. Exactly. And it just drops them off right, yeah. right in the middle. Exactly. Uh, whereas the, the centralized transit, I mean, it might work if you're coming into town, but some of the some of the thoughts about that as well in terms of you know, in Ottawa and Toronto, they don't have centralized stations, they have hubs, they have, which might make more sense for us as well in the future. I, I don't know, I, I can't say I'm going to come in and change all these things, but, you know, I would like to do a review and, and write a cohesive strategy about this. Because, like, instead of everyone coming in downtown and sending them out from the, you know, right now it seems like we, we planned our transit when we were a smaller city, then when we amalgamated, it's like, okay, we'll send this bus out every couple hours, we'll send this bus out every hour. It was just sort of shooting things out to different areas, but I think they should plan their transit in terms of the space that they're dealing with. You know, there's there's Transcab, and again, that's, that's a little wonky at times too. But, you know, if you had a, a depot, say, in the south end, for instance, I'm not sure, just off the top of my head, downtown, and maybe a new Sudbury, and say different buses have, have like different lines, have different colors or whatever. So if you've got buses out, Garson Falcon, or divided by Ward, like roughly, whatever you want to say, like, out in, you know, out to the Lively, then out to, you know, the Valley, Garson, two separate sides, but, like, come in, then transfer at the hubs, right? I, I don't know, I, I haven't thought this through <laughs> entirely, but it, it would just make it a little bit easier to get from one end to the other without having to go through downtown. I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense that you can't get from the university to the south end very easily either, when it's just, that's where you go if you're at the university, that's sort of your destination, and you still walk the back path be about a half an hour for a cup of coffee. Do that about three times a week, any time, night of the day. Mostly for the walk, but at the same time, it's ridiculous that it's easier to walk the back path to Laurentian, go on Loach's Road, and go to Algonquin than it is to take the bus. Wow. 
And it's, it's just a dumb feeling when you're going so far out of your way to go downtown to come back up to the south end to, for whatever you need up here. Well, I mean, we, we deal with that yeah. in the valley. Yeah, for sure. come from the valley, go downtown to go, yeah. to go someplace else. Well, there's so much in the valley now that that, I think, is where they have their eye on expanding and, and development. It makes sense. That's where the land is flat, right? And, 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 um, yet, and, yet, and yet there's another, another point when we take a look. Um, the, the valley is spread out. Yeah. So you can't That's right. get near where people are living. Yeah. And so for people to take the bus, if you often have to go. walk quite a ways. Right. And, and if you're coming back with any kind of parcels yep. or books oh, yeah. in the rain and the snow, it's done that it's for not years yet. Yeah. It's not yeah. So, so we're into, I, I think one of the things you just kind of flipped through that caught my attention, maybe it's because of cause my age, I don't know. but. What a refreshing thing to hear a young person saying, well, I want to get in there. I, I, I know I'm not going to be able to change everything, but I'll be able to give my perspective. You can say it in those words, but you're coming in saying, these are the things that I feel are important. I know I'm not going to be able to change everything. No, I mean, it is. Yeah. help people <laughs> yeah. see things a little bit differently. Yeah. And, and I think so many people want to get into politics because... They say, well, I don't like the way this is done, so I'm going to go in there and I'm going to make the change. And, and, and I'm happens. saying, you're one. <laughs> you're one. There's 12 other people who have to be convinced. That's right. And, and I think, you know, we can all bring something to it. So, you know, maybe my strength isn't on one end of, you know, maybe business management or, or numbers, etc. But I can have someone else take care of that. Then I can have it explained to me that I learned something and I can, you know, we can all do something, right? So there wasn't one person that can come in and fix everything or, or change everything or run everything. But the biggest thing is emphasis on team building, you know, because we're, we're all going to have to work together. And if you want anything done, you need leadership that's going to sort of put us all together and, and get those votes through. So. And, and, and actually, team building is uh, it's another word for uh, recognizing the differences. That's right. And, and not, uh, not ignoring the difference. I, I, I continually refer back to that story about the uh, blind man describing an elephant. Yeah. Each one of them has a different part, yeah. and they all know exactly what the elephant feels like and what it's shaped like. Yeah, but they can't. They, but they can't see the whole thing unless right. they all listen to each other and say, "Well, wait a minute, now you're, we're all describing yeah. something that's much larger than each one of us." Yeah. So yes, you're right. It does feel like a big wall. Yeah. Another person. Yeah, you're right. It feels like a tree. And we put all this together. That's right. How do we? How do we come up with the best decisions that are going to be good for all parts? Well, and I was thinking, like a mayor, for instance, if the councillors are each, you know, feeling part of the elephant, the mayor would be the person who's trying to sketch this out then. Right. And if they can get the full cohesive picture at the end, then they will have succeeded. Yeah. That's and interesting. That, that, that works really well. Yeah, and that, that kind of analogy, I think what happens now, though, is, is, is you get into the situation of, well, if you don't agree with me that an elephant feels like a tree trunk. Right. And, and you're going to say that an elephant feels like it's a big wall, a yeah. rough wall. Right, yeah. Then if you're going to agree with, disagree with me on this, then I'm going to disagree with you the next time you try to describe something. That's and right. I think that's where we run into mm -hmm. uh, the, these, uh, these battles where, well, you didn't vote in favor of what I wanted last right. meeting, so that's I'm right. not going to vote in favor of what you want this meeting. It's not even a matter of what's good or bad. Yeah, well, it was really funny because uh, in Toronto, I think there was a proposal for um, MLSE, uh, to one of the one of the arenas, one of the big um, stadiums, they wanted to renovate it. Mm -hmm. And Rob Ford was against it. And <laughs> actually, the guy from Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment just said, that's okay, that means it's going to be like 38 to 2. <laughs> so if Rob Ford's against it, everyone else is yeah, going to be on screen. side. So right. he doesn't care. Yeah, so you're not... I thought that was pretty funny. So you're voting against the person, not against the idea. And I think... And everyone else will anyway, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, so it's, it's, it is uh, definitely interesting. So... Yeah. What got you interested in politics to begin with? I've, I've always been. I've, I've always done, you know, it's five years in a row I've done Laurentian's Model Parliament. We go to Ottawa, I met Jean Chrétien twice, it was really oh, cool. Okay. Now, it, I've just always, even when I was, you know, at home, you know, with my grandparents and stuff, just always been interested in what's on the news and, and in school. And I was just talking about my, you know, grade 12 politics class, and uh, the teacher said something about South Korea, and the kid next to me turns to me and says, that's the good one, right? Like, <laughs> just always, always been interested in what's going on in the world, and I think you know we have to care about sort of the people in charge. Those are the ones that are 
making our decisions, right? It's, so. it's not a it's it's not a very um, safe place to be though, sitting around the city council because it, oh, I mean, all you have to do is just take a look. I mean, every time they do anything, yeah. It, they're being nailed to the wall by somebody. That's right. And the commenters in the Sudbury Star, right? And yeah. So you. you know, <laughs> so I mean, it's, uh, and, and you have to ask some people, you know, why are you doing it? Like, it, it, yeah. It's, I, I, I know I, I've spoken to many people about this, and I've said, you know what? Nobody runs for city council to get any kind of personal benefit that's financial that's or right. really anything, because for the amount of work that you have to do, yeah, it's it's not. You're not getting paid. No, that works. that's right. And well, I, I've always felt like someone who's got a lot of energy and likes to have a lot of things on the go. Uh, and, and I thought long and hard about it. I, I was asking all my friends, like, is this a good idea? Like, I wasn't going to do it unless I thought I could do it. And, and I definitely considered it for a couple months before I decided. But I, I think the biggest thing is that, uh, you know, there's a lot of perspectives to bring to the table. And I have one that, that's useful in terms of someone that's, that's driven the transits or written the driven, ridden transit. Um, and someone who's been a student in this community, because there are three, you know, three colleges and this universities. There's a big student. That's right. Population. And I love my ward. I think it's definitely a, a really interesting area. It's got a lot of character, but it feels safe and it feels like a community. And it's got a lot of great restaurants. It's got a lot of great businesses. Um, we've got the cat, the, the cat shops there. I want to hopefully support the efforts towards um, spay and neuter clinics. I know the city just recently brought out a coupon system, we'll see what we can do to, to keep making that affordable and, and making that a good choice for people. I, I, I just think there's a lot going on. I think it's a great time to be, you know, part of something like this. Just personally, because, you know, I'm finishing up my degree. Uh, there's, there's a transitional time in council, too. I think there's a sense that, you know, we want to, I think that people want change. I think people are kind of at the point where they want to see new, new faces on council, too. So I think it all just kind of fell together, and it felt like the right time for me and for Sudbury and I thought, you know, I'm going to give it a shot because i got some stuff to say and we'll see what happens. But I, I was always in it for the right reasons. If, if it doesn't work out, you know, I, I'm not to the point where I'm going to, you know, sell my soul to get it or, or to use, you know, really poor campaign tactics or, or take the low road. It's about running a positive campaign, learning a lot, meeting a lot of people, having a lot of... Because most of my stuff is issues-based in the sense where if, if I don't... If I'm not chosen as a candidate, I still had a great chance to bring up a lot of issues and have a lot of discussions. It doesn't so, mean you're out of it, you can still stay involved. No, I mean, the, the fun's in the getting there, right? The journey is half of the... So, I, I, I wanted it for the experience, I wanted to, to try to bring new new things, fresh air, uh, you know, mm -hmm. new faces to council, and it's just interesting time to be a part of everything, so I, I just want to see nice. what happens. That's a good point. <laughs> so, so you basically take the approach, and I, I've used this out in my area, where people say, well, who are you running against? And, and I've said, I'm not running against anybody. I'm running for the work. I'm running for the people. That's right. And, and right now I don't have an opponent, me, so I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's well, right. If the people choose me to represent them, then so be it. Yeah. But I'm not running against. It's not a choice over somebody else. That's right. We all have. Hopefully, anybody who's going to put their name in as a candidate feels that they can do the job. That's right. So if they can all do the job, it's a matter of the people saying, "Okay, if we can all put you out on the ice to do the job, who are we going to put there?" Who do we connect with the and most? Who are we going to put in the game? That's right. And, and so now it's... Now I can't escape, but I like the analogy. <laughs> it's a comparison. It's a choice. That's right. So, so I, I've used that. I've said, no, I'm not running against anybody. I'm running for. Yeah, that's a good now, point. Now, it would be humiliating if there was nobody who had their name in with me and I still lost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too many no votes. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, that can't happen. But, yeah. but I mean, it's so... so what is nice now is that, and, and you're in a, a part of town that is, it's an older part of town. Yeah. There's a lot of... Uh, there's a wide range of people. I like it There's a wide range of people. That's but, right. But there's a lot, of, I mean, it's it's a traditional part of town. I mean, yep. Cliff, yep. That's where you find an awful lot of the, I don't want to say old timers, but that's where you yeah. find a lot of people who have lived in the suburb area for a long time. That's right. So... Well, I've always been comfortable with people, you know, who, who are of older generations. My grand, I was raised with my grandparents. You know, just involved in the community and stuff like that. I, I've, when I was younger, I mean, I'm coming of my own age now, but when I was younger, it was much easier just sit up, sit, sit there and have a talk with, with an older person or um, an adult, an elderly person all the time. I, I was, you know, my grandma's friends all thought it was kind of funny because I just called them by their first names. That's what my, what my grandparents did, you know? Like, I've always had that sort of affinity for people who are older than me. Um, a, lot, a lot of my friends are older than me, too. It's just like... What's interesting, though, is you probably have more in common with some of their issues and their concerns than middle-aged people. Yeah. Because, I mean, 
who gets the discounts at the movies? You at the students. Yes, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, so I mean, some of your your concerns were you're kind of at the beginning of what you hope is going to be a, a fairly yeah. successful, prosperous yeah, <laughs> lifetime. Uh, now you've got the seniors who are saying, you know, we've gone through. We we don't have the same opportunities that the younger people have, and yeah, money.